Hey everyone, this is Yulong. Welcome to my series of recovering from Achilles tendon rupture. This is the fourth video, um, and this is to track what happened during the fifth and sixth week after my surgery. Uh, I want to talk about things I learned, uh, including the boots, uh, tendon stretch, um, weight bearing, and exercises. Okay, the boots. Last time I mentioned that because I have both the aircast boot and the vacuum pad boot, so I compared them a little bit, you know, with you know ups and downs. Um, but never tried the aircast on. Um, since I switched off cast, I'm I have been always wearing the vacuum pad. So last week I actually tried aircast on, and man, that's such a big difference. When I tried it on, I was wearing the vacuum pad with the max plantar flexion position, which I think it's a it's 30 degree. And when I switched to the aircast boot, I also use all the wedges. So that's also the max position for aircast. But I immediately feel a strong stretch on my tendon when I was in aircast. What it means is I think aircast provides a smaller plantar flexion degree compared with vacuum pad does. And that got me think of when I switch from cast to vacuum pad. At that time, I don't think I feel a big difference. Meaning the degree that cast provides, which should be like the max plantar flexion position, might be the same as that the vacuum pad provides. That's why I didn't feel the difference, right? I mean, obviously, I won't be able to to know what's the feeling switching from cast to air cast. But yeah, I mean, has anyone done that and feel the difference? Uh, I'd be curious to know because now I, when I think about it, I don't think anybody mentioned uh, uh, if they feel the tendon stretch when they switch from the cast to air cast, right? Because if I can feel the stretch between the vacuum pad and the air cast, then if someone's switching from cast to air cast, they should definitely feel the stretch. Anyway, that sort of draws my attention to the comparison of the two boots. And I've found actually quite some differences. And I'm gonna sort of start a separate video just reviewing the two types of boots. But yeah, that's, this is definitely interesting. Next is the heel lift. Now, my doctor would like me to start removing the heel lift starting from week five. And the plan is when we meet again on week eight, there should be only one wedge left. Remember in the wedge system, there are four wedges in total. Now, because I am not using a uh, air cast boot, I'm using a vacuum pad, which doesn't have wedges. So my understanding is Basically, my doctor would like me to remove 75% of the heel lift in my vacuum pad. Right? So that's what I have been doing. I didn't do anything actually on week five because I want my tendon to get used to the boot. And then I have been starting reducing the heel lift uh, since week six. And this is end of week six. What I've accomplished is the total degrees of the heel lift that vacuum pit provides is 30 degree. And for the week of six, I've been reducing to 20 degrees. So that's like a third of the heel lift. Now let me show you how to reduce the heel lift in the vacuum pit. It's mostly about adjusting the two notches here. Let me see if you can see clearly. Basically, I'm going to use this to pull this out and lower it. Let me show you. So now I unlock it. Like before it was locked, right? Now I unlocked it and then I pulled it out. And then I can move it down to a notch. So each notch represents five degrees. So that's what I've been doing. I reduced five degrees about like four or five days uh, a time. So right now I'm at two notches below, um, which I think 
so which means now I'm at 20 uh, degrees. So this locks it again. And then you can see the interesting thing is because there is a gap between the upper notch and uh, the lower notch, it means the boot is actually, you can rock the boot right now. It gives like 10 degrees of range of motion, which is interesting, right? So what I've been doing is every time I not move down a notch, I first I also move down the upper notch. Uh, it's the same way. You just unlock it and then pull it and then lock it again. In this way, because it doesn't have any gap between the two notches, then there's no range of motion. So it's just like a regular boot where uh, now the position is 20 degrees instead. So I will usually wear this um, for like the first day. Um, but once I get used to it, I will then move the notch, the upper notch back into the max position. In this way, it gives me 10 degrees of range of motion in the boot. I think it helps me walking and also it helps me to sort of actually use my tendon, right? And this is a protected position. It will never go beyond 10 degrees. So I feel like safe doing this. So you can probably tell that uh, another advantage I think Vacopate has is it provides this range of motion in boot, which I think is really great. Um, yeah, again, check out the video where I do the full review. Okay, the next thing is weight bearing. My doctor also would like me to reach full weight bearing at week eight when we meet again. Because since week four, I have been doing partial weight bearing so that's just what I have been doing. I'll just keep doing that. Um, I noticed that when I reach 50% weight bearing, I can walk with only one crutch instead of two. That's much better than um, two crutches because it's easier to walk. It also frees one of your hands. Now at the end of week six, I am actually able to walk without any crutches. That's even better, right? However, I don't think I've reached full weight bearing yet. My understanding of full weight bearing is standing only on your injured leg. And I tried that. I could not do that. That hurt my tendon. So I, I guess I still have some ways to go. Also, I think reducing the heel lift definitely complicated things a little bit. Every time I reduce the heel lift, first, uh, I will feel pain when I even walk without crutches. So I have to grab my crutch again and sort of start over and gradually lose my crutch. So that's definitely something to keep in mind in that if you are doing the uh, lowering heel lift and increasing the weight bearing at the same time, um, I feel like they might sort of complicate each other a little bit. I can show you a video how I walk without the crutches. Okay, next is exercise. So I've been doing all kinds of different exercises uh, for the week five and six. Um, I'm still doing biking. I'm biking 10 to 15 minutes every day. I'm slowly adding resistance. And then I'm also doing weightlifting in my garage. So I have a barbell, I have uh, some plates um, because now I'm wearing boots so I can shower whenever I want so that I don't have to sort of distribute the weightlifting throughout the day to prevent like me getting too sweaty. Now I, I can just go into garage and doing uh, weightlifting. Because I can sort of walk without crutch, so I, I can stand some weight on my injured leg. That allows me to do a lot of different weightlifting, the bench press, overhead press, all the things. Of course, I still cannot do things like deadlift or squats. But yeah, I can do a bench press, all kind of press. Uh, I can do pull-ups as long as it doesn't involve the tendon too much. 
I'm also for the tendon doing a lot of rehab exercises. Um, and let me actually show you all the things that I'm doing right now. Okay, so this is my injured leg. What I start with is crunching the towels. I've seen a lot of people doing this. Uh, what you do is basically you put it, put down a towel on the floor, and then you're trying to grab the towel all by your toes of your of the injured leg, right? So how it, it would just look like this, right? So it slowly grabs the towel and see how far you can go. So our floor is slippery, so it's kind of hard to grab all the towels. Uh, I think it's also because my toes are still pretty weak. So I'll just try a couple more times and then uh, you slowly give back the towel. So that's sort of basically doing the towel crunching in a reversed fashion. And this really, when I'm doing this, I can really feel the tendon, it's tightening. Okay, so I will just do it like this and that will conclude this exercises. I do all these exercises as a set and I will repeat this set like three, four times a week. Uh, I'm sorry, three, four times a day. Now the second exercise is sliding, which is sliding the leg towards my body, right? And immediately I can feel the tendon tightening here. So I will just up at the position where uh, it still feels okay. And I will pause for like three, four seconds, and then I will slide back. Right? And I repeat it for about five times. I think this works similarly to the range of motion, right? So it helps you to stretch the tendon a little bit. So after the last repetition of this sliding, I will also starting raise, trying to raise my heel a couple times while keeping the sliding position. I think this is just to strengthen the tendon um, sort of vertically. But yeah, so every time, actually this is the hardest among the three. So after that, I'm done with the towel. Next, I'll perform some exercises on this leg razor. Um, so I put a futon on this leg razor so that it sort of hands my leg. And then it's a standard range of motion up and downs. I'll repeat the up and downs for like 40, 50 times. You can see my range of motion is very limited right now. Okay, now we're down with vertical range of motion. I'm gonna do like just five sets of the left and right, trying to move side by side. That was it. Um, the last thing I would do is to get a band. Like right now I'm using the light, lightest band. Basically, I'm just gonna wrap around my foot and then I'll stretch it so that I can feel a little bit stretch uh, on my tendon, but not too much, right? This is the lightest one. And then I'll just push and I'll push 10 times. Okay. So that's all the exercises. And after that, typically I will just um, ice my, uh, my foot. I put my uh, ice packs in the cooler so that I don't have to run to the refrigerator every time. Okay, that's it for the update. I think I will see you in two weeks, which 
by the time hopefully I will be out of the boot and start wearing a regular shoe.